Five, four, three, two, one. Mike Owens with Inside Fighting here, joined today by Dangerous Dakota DeChiva, PFL 2024 finalist. Dakota, always a pleasure to sit down and chat. How things are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> how does how does me introducing you as finalist sound? Just like I've always envisioned. <laughs> just I just knew it was coming, so not really a shock. <laughs> you don't strike me as the type to view a final, becoming a finalist as a celebration. You strike me as the type that until you've got that world title, it, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, we want first place. There's no second place, no third place in my world. So until it's first, until I'm like coming on and I've got my belt here and I'm holding it, then I'm not really bothered. <laughs> Did your semi-final bout against Jenna Bishop play out exactly as you expected? Um, yeah, I suppose it did. Even the takedown, to be honest, I thought she would probably end up taking me down at some point, but it was good. I got to show exactly what I wanted to show, shock a few people. Um, even a few people from PFL, I think, were a little bit shocked as well. Um, so yeah, it played out exactly how I wanted it to. How so? What 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 do you think you shocked people by? I think even people, I mean, I spoke to a few people today at the um this press conference that I'm at, you know, from PFL, and they 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 did say like you made that was the statement you made because Jenna was the one person that obviously you needed to be. And with her taking you down and the way you just got back up straight away, it kind of just, it shut a lot of people up and shocked a lot of people for sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't want someone to take me down, but at the same time I did. So we were laughing, me and my team were laughing afterwards. Like it was perfect that it happened that way. Although you shouldn't have got took down. <laughs> because there should be a natural ratcheting up of the competition as you go through the tournament, but you finished the first three people you faced in the first round. Have you felt things get more difficult? Because it hasn't looked from the outside looking in like there's been a leveling pr progression in competition because you've been getting people out of there so quickly. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I treat every person the same. Like, I feel like every I treat every girl in this tournament like they are the best in the world and I need to beat them. So for me, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm never getting in and underestimating anyone and expecting it to be a quick fight or an easy fight. Like, I'll just go in, get the finish that I want to get and get out. So, um, yeah, I suppose that's just the way it's gone. <laughs> We'll get back to the interview in just a second, but first, college football is finally back and Inside Fighting have partnered with DraftKings to bring you an amazing new offer. New DraftKings customers who bet $5 receive $200 in bonus bets instantly just by signing up using promo code Inside Fighting. Enjoy. There was a, li I don't want to say bad blood because that's a bit too harsh, but there was a slight little undercurrent of tension between you and Jenna throughout the, throughout the build up. Only a little. I'm being polite. Did that fuel you in any way in the fight or is it just business as usual when you step in there? I wouldn't say it fuels me because I would still turn up and be the same person that, that I was on that night without that extra fuel. I still am going to get in and try and kill someone like that. But I do always say like it's happened before my second fight with PFL when I was in New York. She, like the girl that I fought was talking the most and I got in and knocked her out. So I always say, like, if you're going to annoy me even more than, like, you're going to annoy me when I'm already crazy without it. Do you know what I mean? When I get in that cage, I'm already going to turn up and try and kill someone. So if you piss me off even more, you're going to get it 10 times worse. And she did, didn't she? She fell straight on her face. So <laughs> that's kind of just what happened. <laughs> Do you like the idea of rivalry fights? Like, is this, like, would you prefer there to be a little bit of tension between you? Or again, is it is that just... You know, that that's out, outside the cage stuff. Yeah, no, I'm not really bothered. Like, I don't need a bit of attention. Like, as soon as I have a face-off with someone the day before at the ceremonial wanes, I'm in the zone, like, and I'm ready to go. So it doesn't matter whether you've been nice to me or horrible to me. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna get in and try and kill you. Afterwards, I'm obviously not going to talk like I did if you haven't done anything to me. Um, Because I'm like, I feel like I would be just, I'm never disrespectful disrespectful to anyone left it's, unless they've said something about me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I would just kind of stay on a normal level with the girls if they did the same thing, but they haven't this season. They, they've tended like to talk a lot about my my journey and my name. <laughs> Where did this come from? Where did the shushing angle come from to her coaches and to her? Just because she talks so much, like she's not shut up all all season. She's um even like the girl that was in a corner who's one of the UFC fighters and Angie or Angela, whatever her name is. Um, she was like tagging me in stories. Katzingano was tagging me in stories on Instagram, like saying, "Oh, she's getting all the easy matches. She's getting the cans and this, that, and the other." And it's just like 
just personally like writing about me like they don't need to do that so that's where the shush they would like to show up you and your whole team just show up don't speak because this is what happens when you do <laughs> it must feel nice to prove the doubters wrong because you have you have had a lot of doubters and i don't know if that's just people maybe being a hint of jealousy i don't know what that particularly is but you do seem to have people doubting you at each one of these stages so especially with that little bit of needle it must have felt nice to to prove those doubters wrong yeah, it definitely does. And because I don't really bite back, I'm not really one to write on social media. Like, I'm not going to start tagging Jenna and arguing back on a story. Like, no. that's just not me. I'm just not that type of person. So I'm not interested in all that. So to be able to do that in the cage, where which is what I'm here to do, you know, I'm here to put on a performance. We're not here to talk about each other. We're here to fight. So being able to do it there is, like, more satisfying for me than to be able to write on a story and, uh, and tag her in it. Do you feel like you'll be one of those fighters who will be doubted until you get to your eventual goal like we've for example last year we saw Sean O'Malley become a world champion and for virtually every one of his fights he was doubted up until the point where he knocked out all Jimmy Sterling to become bantamweight yeah. champion do you feel like you'll be one of those fighters who have ev every one of these tests that you get you'll hear that undercurrent of people saying oh this is going to be the one where she's going to be exposed do you think that will happen throughout the rest of your career 100% yeah I don't think like it'll keep I think as well I know if people take the mate, but because I don't look like a fighter as well, people just think I get like people, PFL will give me like an easy route because um I, I don't look like the typical fighter. I look like a girl, a girl, and I'm easy to promote. That's why, you know, she's doing well type thing. Mm. I think that's why as well. I'm always going to be a girl, a girl. So unless I kind of change what I look like and become this like evil person, I, then I think that's what people are always going to say. So you have Tyler Santos in the final October, November time. What yeah. do you think a win over Tyler Santos does to further, further silence those doubters, but also say about your skill set and what you can do? I think it'll be massive. When I beat her, it'll be massive. You know, they thought, a lot of people thought that she beat uh, Shevchenko at one point. So I feel like to then say afterwards when I beat her that I still haven't fought anybody would just be stupid and just be just, you know, people just saying it for the sake of it now. So I definitely think this is the one fight that I can really make a statement with and um, get a little bit of respect. Not that I'm bothered because, you know, it's just what I think and what my team think that matters. But still, it's nice to, you know, keep proving them. And I think this will be the fight that finally does that, hopefully. Do you think this is going to be a, a striking match? Do you think she's going to want to stand with you? Or do you think she's going to want to mix in the take time? I think she's going to want to mix in the takedown. Yeah, she says that she'll probably want to strike with me, but I don't think she will when she um when she, when I when I hit her for sure. I mean, I leg kicked Jenna at one point in the fight, and she come charging at me straight away, trying to take me down. So mm. I definitely think that she'll want to get hold of me at some point. She won't want to strike the whole time. Again, similar to the question I've just asked you about doubt by people doubting you. Do you feel like you'll be one of those fighters who? Everybody who you fight throughout your career, their game plan will be to take it to the floor at some point. Probably, yeah. Um, I think it'll be very rare that you get like a striker that will want to stand and strike with me, especially if I keep progressing the way I am at the moment. I feel like I've still got so much to learn in my striking. It's not perfect, but um, obviously with the the statement I'm making now with it, imagine when I've progressed even more, like people are definitely not going to want to strike with me. Although, I don't know, maybe in the future I'll get a few like submission wins or something like that, and then they won't want to go to the floor either. Mm. So. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I um I checked topology before we jumped on the independent rankings and they have you ranked at number twenty two in the world at women's flyweight. How accurate do you think that is? Don't really look at any of that and I'm not really bothered. <laughs> I'm not really bothered, honestly. Um I mean I'll get this belt, this world title belt, and then I just keep beating the girls. I'm I'm not bothered about what it says on the internet about, you know, um but who's number one and whatever and you know I don't even take note when they say like who's pound for pound the best and whatever <laughs> whatever as long as I'm happy and I keep winning and I've got an unbeaten record then I'll be happy because I'm very competitive and that's the main thing <laughs> if you had to give me a top five rankings for the 125 pound division across all all organizations what would your top five be Shevchenko so like Shevchenko's one is that right? She's the goat for me, yeah. Okay. Present the goat. Um, then I'd say Alexa Grasso, you've got to give it her, man. She's like <laughs> been the only person to kind of nearly take it, well, take it from Shevchenko. Um, 125s, who else would I say? 
is it Ma uh, Mar Marriott? Marriott? The, the friend, Manon, she's Manon Firo. Yeah, yeah. I feel like she's, um, I know Rose and Blanchfield are fighting soon. So I know that she's, she's kind of, they're fighting for the, is it, they're going to be the next title contender or whatever. I think so, I feel possibly. Like, I feel like the other girl will be better. Um, Liz Carmouche, no, I don't know whether I'd put her in top five. I don't know. Yeah, I probably would. I'd then put Santos and then I'd put um, Liz Carmouche, I think. So you're not putting yourself there? Oh, me. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm not put. I'm not going to put myself in. No, I'll win the belt and then we'll see. <laughs> so once you win the belt, there's, there's, you think there's a discussion, but right now you still feel like there's once a, there's I win, a bit of work Yeah, to do. once I win the belt, I say I'd like, I'd sit in at fourth and okay. then, yeah, we'll we'll see then. I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm top right now because I'm still 26. You know, these girls have been around years and proven mm. themselves. So I've still got time to do that. But definitely, I'm I'm definitely in top five. If I was to say now, I'd put myself at four mm. above Talia and Liz. Yeah, for sure. I like that. I know that uh, Valentina is your goat in this division, as you just mentioned. So how do you see her trilogy against Alexa playing out? I know who you're rooting for. I know that for starters. But how do you see it playing out? <laughs> um... I don't I don't know. I don't really want to say. I don't know whether I don't know whether she's gonna get a belt back. I'm not sure. I don't know. I I'd like to say she gets a belt back, but I'm not I'm not swaying that way, if I'm gonna be completely honest. What we'll do you see. feel like? Do you feel like it's just a timing thing? Like just as Valentina's getting a little bit older, Alexa's coming into a prime, one of those situations. Yeah. One of them situations, yeah, and I feel like she's had the t she's had the the loss, the draw, and now I just feel like Grasso is just going to be growing in confidence, and Shevchenko is kind of just going to be. She she looks just as hungry, but I don't know, mm. I don't know. Um, I can tell by the background behind you that you're gonna. I'm going to presume you're in Washington D.C. for the big press conference today. How yeah. do you see the main and co-main of that cards between Francis and Garnu and Helen Ferreira and Chris Cyborg and Larissa Pacheco playing out? Now, Renan Ferreira is from ATT, where I am. Mm -hmm. If you see that man hit the pads, you'll just straight away know who's going to win that fight. And I know Ngannou is a unit as well, but Renan's kind of got a little bit of height on him. He'll have a little bit of reach on him, and he's so quick. I just feel like he's he's 100% going to win, but it's going to be a massive fight. It will be a massive fight. Two massive guys like that facing each other. It's gonna be crazy, and I definitely think it will be a knockout. I'm not gonna lie. Is that um, is that is that not a little bit of gym bias because you've seen him in the gym? You're you're gonna go with Henan Ferreira, hundred percent. And I mean, if I wasn't biased and I watched Renan, a hundred percent would be like mm. shit. Like he he's a he's a unit, honestly. And I know Ingarno is because I've seen him as well. But there's just something different about Renan completely. But um, Cyborg and Pacheco, what a fight as well. You know, I mean, if she turns up, I don't know whether Cyborg will because she wasn't here today. <laughs> so not a great start. She hasn't but, turned um, up. I didn't know that. Yeah, she didn't. She couldn't make it today, apparently, which was such a shame because Pacheco was here and it would have been great to have them, you know, face off against each other. But um, yeah, um, we'll see what happens there as well. Pacheco is kind of, she's two time, two, two weight division champ, I think, with PFL now. So she's on a high as well. Her confidence is crazy high and... Cyborg's not been in for a while, so that'll be an interesting matchup as well. I imagine when you see that when you're around those fights and you see those fights getting promoted, they're the type of fights that you want to be in or the car type of cards that you want to be in. Obviously, the world title, I'm not, I know we're not getting ahead of ourselves, but they're the type of cards and the type of fights that you want to be in in the future. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if I was even on the undercard of that, like I would love that, you know. So that's why I don't really want to be doing tournaments forever. I want to be able to elbow as well. That's a massive thing for me coming from Thai boxing. I've not been able to elbow the whole season. So um, they're the they're the things that I kind of I want to speak to PFL about next year and, you know, come up with some new things, hopefully come to Manchester as well. But we'll see. Do you, what would in an ideal world would you would you like to defend the world title a second time or do the tournament a second time round and almost defend that title if you win it in later on this year or once once you win the world title once do you want to go on to let's say bigger and better things? Yeah, I think um, I think I mean it would be good to defend it. I feel like, but then at the same time, like I've won it, I've got no point to prove. Like I'll still fight any of the girls, but do I need to do it in a tournament format? Like mm. I don't feel like that's necessary um I can fight these girls on you know and and 
I'm kind of I'm pulling enough eyes to be able to fight one off fights without a whole tournament again. So I feel like I can still make the same impact by them putting me on a card like that against a tough opponent. So I would like to do that really. Um but you know, if I have to defend my belt and do the tournament format again, then that's kind of what I'll have to do going into another season. Well, it all it all finishes, I should say, this this year's tournament with Tyler Santos later on this year. Dakota, always a place to catch up. Wish you that wish you a safe and happy rest rest of your training camp, and hopefully we'll talk before the finals later this year. Thank you so much. It's lovely to speak to you again. <laughs>